Welcome, this is Rob Frony, and I'm here to explain how an adaptive FIR filter works. Here we have uh, uh, an FIR filter with adjustable coefficients. There are in an FIR filter uh, a number of coefficients. These are the uh, um, FIR filter coefficients, and uh, they're uh, here denoted by the letter K. Um, you might have two coefficients or 256 coefficients or whatever. And, and these coefficients in this FIR filter are adjustable. In other words, you can change them. So we start out with uh, this adjustable filter who has an input X of N and an output D hat of N. And we take that d hat of n and we subtract it from a desired output d of n. And the difference is the error e of n. And that we feed into a uh, coefficient adjustment algorithm. Also into this coefficient adjustment algorithm we put the input x of n. So it knows what's going into the filter. It knows what the error is between what we desire and what's actually coming out and it uses that information to make a adjustment to the FIR filter coefficients change the way this FIR filter is filtering uh, by an amount delta H sub n of k so that H sub n plus 1 of k equals H sub n of k plus delta H sub n of k. Now an example application for this would be uh, taking uh, an, uh, an unknown filter, this is an unknown FIR filter, and we would like to, to figure out what the coefficients are for this unknown filter, or we'd like to make an adjustable filter that would zoom into this unknown filter. Uh, often in real life, this unknown filter is really an unknown filter, something you don't know, or something that is always changing. And so you need to keep adjusting to keep up with it. But uh, in this case, what we want to do is make our, our FIR filter mimic that filter. So we take the same input, x of n, and put it into our unknown filter. And the output of our unknown filter, we would feed into the d of n. And uh, that would be our desired output from our uh, adjustable filter. And if we can make this coefficient algorithm work properly, then the h sub n of k will converge to the h sub unknown of k down here. So this is just a, an application. This bottom part right here is just an application. This is a, an adaptive filter up here. So uh, I would like to uh, then think about how we can make this coefficient adjustment algorithm work. What I'd like to do is I'd like to minimize the squared error here. The reason we do squared error is because, well, the absolute value of error, absolute value has an uh, no derivative, it's a, the derivative is undefined uh, right at the minimum, so that's not a good uh, thing to use um, a calculus on. Um, and of course we don't want to uh, minimize just the error, because the error, if we minimize that, would go to minus infinity, and that would make uh, d sub n hat not equal to d sub n for sure. So what I'd like to do is minimize the, the squared error. So we're going to minimize e squared of n, and I'd like to do a, a two-coefficient filter. That means there are uh, um, n equals two uh, coefficients. And those coefficients would be h sub n of 1 and h sub n of 0. Those are the two coefficients. So if I was to graph a picture of, uh, e, n's of uh, e squared of n, uh, that would uh, be something like this. We'd have the h of n, h n of 0 axis and the h n of 1 axis. And we could make a contour plot of e squared of n. And maybe you could think of this place in the middle that it's going down to as a hole. And, and that would be, right here would be where the, uh, the squared error is minimum. So if you notice up here, we can see what's happening, what the x of n looks like now and what the e of n looks like now. But we can't really see it all over. We can only see it right at one point where we happen to be right now. And so suppose we were right here on this contour line right now. And all we can see is just right around that area. We could look at maybe the derivatives right there. And what we'd like to do is use the method of steepest descent. And so 
we'd like to go um, perpendicular to the contour line or in the direction of the gradient, actually in the direction of negative the gradient, to go down to the, to the bottom. So we could take a little step here and a little step and a little step and hopefully we'd end up there at the minimum sooner or later, as long as we don't make our steps too big. So what that means is we'd like to find the, the make the uh, the the change in 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 the in the delta h sub n of one and the delta h sub n of zero uh, proportional to the the derivative here. So you can see in this case delta h sub n of one needs to be somewhat negative, pretty big, and delta h sub n of zero needs to be positive, just a little bit. So how do we get that mathematically? Well, here's what we do. We could say delta h sub n of k is negative, because I want to go in negative the gradient direction. I'm going to put a mu in here. The mu is my adjustable step size. And then I'm going to just write the derivative of e sub n squared with respect to h sub n of k. And so um, then the question becomes, what is e squared of n? And how does it depend on h sub n of k? Well, e of n if, is, is really d of n minus d hat of n. You can see that up from here. here. e of n is d of, uh, d of n minus d hat of n. And what is d hat of n? Well, d hat of n right here is equal to the output of this filter, which is the convolution of x of n with h sub n of k. So here we have d hat of n. This is the convolution, the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 hn of k, x of n minus k. So there's the convolution. And so now let's look at the derivative. To take the derivative of e squared, that would be 2 times e times the derivative of e with respect to hn of k. So notice I've got the minus mu here, the 2, and the e of n. And then I've got the partial of en with respect to hn of k. And we're using chain rule here. Now, to get the, uh, these numbers, the partial of e n with respect to h n of k, we can do that over here. Here's the, uh, here's the d and there's the e. Now, e is d minus d n hat. Now, d here does not depend in any way on those h n of k's. It's only coming through this way, so there's no dependence there. So the derivative of d with respect to h n of k is 0. And the derivative of d hat of n would be the derivative of this guy with respect to hn of k. So let's do it with respect to, say, the zeroth one. Well, when you do this sum, k equals 0 to n minus 1, it goes 0 up to 1 in our case. When I plug in hn of 0, well, I actually get an hn of 0 times something there, but all the other terms are going to be, there's no hn of 0 in all the other terms. So you only get one term when you take the derivative with respect to the kth the kth hn, and that's x of n minus k. So the derivative of dn hat with respect to hn of k is x of n minus k. Now if I take that guy and plug him into the derivative of e, which is just minus this guy, then I could plug that in there. That minus sign makes this guy a positive. And the en we get, we can just read it right off. It's one of our inputs to our coefficient adjustment algorithm. And the xn is the, the other uh, input. So we know this guy and we know that guy. And we can adjust our step size here. And hopefully we can make these two things converge. This guy will converge to that guy. So this is uh, a very simple adaptive FIR filter. It's uh, um, using the method of steepest descent, also known as, uh, in this case, is a LMS algorithm, least mean square algorithm. This e squared of n is a, a, an approximation for the um, mean square, and we are trying to make that least. So hopefully uh, this helps you understand adaptive FIR filters.